today. Last thing, because I want to trace today, I want you to trace today and understand a little bit better the, the, the traces that you're going to be taking. I'm back to part three, by the way, page 81. And in page 81, you see that there are two tools that you could use to trace. One of them is a, is a system manager trace viewer tool. That one is not a real time trace tool, it just reads from logs. Could be useful? Yeah. Uh, do I like it? Uh, not so much, but it's useful if, in case you want to see a problem that happened in the past, you know. Uh, the other one, it's a tracing tool in Session Manager called TraceSM, and that one is a real-time tracing tool. I like that one. I'm going to show you the two of them, and I'm actually going to start uh, first with TraceSM, the one I prefer. It's not the order here in the book. They, they tell you about the one in System Manager first, but I want to I want to show you the one in Session Manager first, which is in page 88. I'll come back to, to the other one, promise. And Trace SM is accessed through the Session Manager shell, so you need to put it into Session Manager using the management interface, not the SM100, but the management interface. Let's actually do it right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to open up Putty and I'm going to go to 10.8 because I want to go to lab one session manager management interface. The login should be customer and the password should be cost1234 and I'm in. I'm going to increase the size here so that you can see something. <coughs> the font type cannot be too large though because otherwise when I trace it's not going to allow me to... Let me see. It's a little bit better than a little bit better. Maybe, maybe one... Uh, maybe 14. Let's try 14. Okay, so... And also, let me try turning this off. Yeah, it seems like there's an ability to just turn off one near the screen. Better, there you go. Oh, yeah. Much Way cool. <coughs> okay, so the command to run trace SM is trace SM. With trace in lowercase, SM in uppercase. Okay? And then you run it, and right now I'm capturing, well, not really. I need to press S to start the, the capture, and then it tells me, or it asks me what kind of stuff I want to <laughs> capture. Right now, I'm just going to capture zip messages, but notice that there are some other options. I'll show you PPM tomorrow, call processing, probably show it to you to, uh, today, and there's also a new option, which is TLS handshaking. In case you're having TLS problems, you can trace and see what kind of problems you're having with TLS. It's useful if you're having problems with uh, certificates in TLS. So I'm capturing right now, and all of the options in Trace SM, all of the options you can have, are here in the bottom. You see? And you access them by pressing the letter associated to the option. So if you want to stop the trace, you would press what? St S for stop. If you want to quit the trace, and go back to the Linux shell, you would press Q, right? So all of the options that you have are here. Uh, let's see, let's place a call. I'm gonna I actually have my 1X communicator right now. Let's register the phone and see what's going on here. How did you start with that original menu? I'm sorry, I missed that. How did I get here? Yeah, when you're on the bash part, what you got? Yeah, so let me actually show you. I'm going to stop the trace and I'm going to quit the trace. You, you could press Q right away and exit the, the trace, but it's not a good habit because sometimes you leave the process hanging, you know? And the way I did it when was I went to the Linux ch uh, shell and then I just typed trace SM like this. Lower trace, <laughs> lo uh, uh, lower case. Yeah. yeah, trace SM. And you're able to run only one instance of TraceSM per session manager. 
So if you were running Trace SM right now, are you? I don't think no, so, no. because I was able to do it. Uh, but take a look at this. I'm actually going to duplicate, just to show you, in case you ever face this problem. I'm going to log back to the same session manner. And if I were to run Trace SM again, it's going to tell me that there is one instance mm -hmm. of Trace SM already running. Yeah, That's it. So nervous, yeah. You could kill it. Yeah, you could kill it. And actually, in this right. release, there is an easy way to kill it. In previous releases, you needed to find the process ID. But here, all of the things that you can do with TraceSM, if you go with TraceSM minus H, awesome. it's going to give you the help and give you all the things that you could potentially do with TraceSM. One of them, oops, what's going on? Ah, yeah, one of them. Why is this display like this? Hold on. Making full screen. <coughs> ah, a little bit better. So, one of the things you could do is trace the same minus K to kill other trace the same instances. Okay, so you could do that. Another thing you could do, but this is more something you could do here in the lab, it's not recommended to do in a production environment, is trace the same minus M. It allows to run multiple instances of TraceSM. However, notice that it says do not use this option in a production environment because it may cause performance issues. So ideally, you only have one TraceSM running at a given time. Here in the lab, if we, were to, if we wanted to run three TraceSMs at the same time, it's fine because we only have one call, two calls going through session man. Okay, so again, if I want to kill the other trace, I would go with trace the same minus K. And that would kill. If I go now here, you would notice that it, it killed the, and not only killed the session, but messed up my, my prompt. Yeah, close that. <laughs> yeah. Close and open, yes. Yeah, I will have to close party and reopen it. But I have this one here. So I'm gonna go with trace the same start the capture and again here select the stuff that I want to capture I move with my with the arrow keys in my keyboard to select whatever I want and then the space bar in case I want to enable or disable stuff I'll give you a time to practice in a few minutes just stay here with me so I'm gonna capture zip messages and you can see on the bottom that zips enable right uh, on the low lower left corner of the screen you see the zips enable and the other things are the same and I'm gonna clear the screen right now by pressing C because C allows me to clear okay now I'm gonna register my actually and register my phone by logging out you see that the the way the phone unregister is by sending a register message to unregister. Uh, I see that right now, 1204. What phone is this one? Is, that, is one of yours? 1204 is this one. So you have right now 1204 and 1201. 1201. Okay. Okay, so I see that right now that one registered. But let me register mine again just to show you that upon registration and the phone tries to register I showed you before that session manner unauthorizes that registration but it's just uh, it's, it's, this is just common in SIP so right now what, the, what session manner is doing is challenging the phone and then the phone sends again a registration a register message and if you open that one you see some of the headers that we talked about yesterday, but you also see an authorization header. If you compare this register message with the very first one, the only difference is that the second one will have the authorization header. And that's why the second register is allowed. And that's why the phone registers. Notice that the phone right away, since it's an Avaya phone, tries to subscribe to this event, a Avaya CM feature status, but there is no CM. So it tries 
and it tries and it tries and it will try forever until we have communication manner in the picture. That's why you get to see that exclamation mark right now in your phones because the phone cannot subscribe not only to this event but to any of the other four events that it needs to subscribe. We haven't talked about those five events. I'll show you. Is, is I'll talk that, about them later. Is that why when you dial it now to another station, you you, you ask us to hit the pound key to buy that? Yeah, because also uh, through these events, not that one but another event, uh, the phone gets the dial plan. Gotcha. and it gets the dial plan from CN. So this is the very first event that the phone tries to subscribe to. You'll see that it's the same event all the time because if it doesn't subscribe to that one, it doesn't even try to subscribe to the other four. So is it only trying to look for CM? Uh, because do we have an application sequence assigned somewhere? No, it's because it's an Avaya phone and in the firmware, the phone so right away tries. assuming tries there's probably a CM in yeah, this environment yeah, where's my features. Exactly, mm -hmm. every Avaya phone, Every Avaya phone configured SIP try to subscribe to event right away, even if it, there is no sequence. Now, if there is sequence, the subscription happens, but the phone tries to subscribe because it's an Avaya phone and it, it assumes that there is a CM somewhere. For so even if there was a sequence, but CM was down for whatever reason, it would look like this if that CM wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, okay. which is, yeah. Right now our CM, I mean it's up, but there is no relationship between the right. phone and CM. Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> no problem. So let's see. Let me show you some options here. S to stop, uh, Q to quit, enter for details. That means that if I go to a message and hit enter, I get to see headers, zip headers. Notice that this message right now the subscribe message only has header, it doesn't have a body. Only zip headers. Some messages have a body. Uh, let's place a call. I'm actually going, I just press C to clear the screen. And I'm gonna call 1204. Is, is that one registered right now? Yes. Okay, 1204. And let's see. I notice the invite. Kind of hard to tell to, to see it. It's ringing. I when you answer, when you do you see something here? <laughs> when you answer, now you get to see this 200. Okay, right when you answer, and the acknowledge coming back from me, acknowledging that I received a final answer. Uh, if you hang up, you're gonna, you're gonna see the bye. Right? <coughs> Buy mm -hmm. twice just because of that proxy authorization required that happens all the time. And then the 200 OK uh, as the final answer for that buy. Notice that in the middle of the trace, in this case, I have some garbage, let's say, like those subscriptions happening. So maybe this is a good time to apply a filter. You apply filters by pressing F, oh. F for filtering. So if I press F, there is a lot of different options for filtering stuff here. I could filter based on URI. This is useful in real life because in real life you're gonna have a hundred calls going through this session manager. So you wanna filter uh, uh, based on the extension number. Uh, I could filter, I mean right now there's only one call, but I could use uh, this filter, minus U and the extension number, 1203 or 1204 if I wanna see only uh, calls relate to those numbers. Notice that there is a lot of uh, options. Minus E, minus I, if I wanna filter based on IP address. Minus C, if I wanna filter based on call ID. Remember that call ID is not caller ID. It's that random number that identifies the call. A lot of options. And how would you, ever, how would you ever pull up a call ID filter you no, wouldn't no. know what the call ID is in well, all real time. It, maybe you get it originally when it, we first start to trace, and then everything else starts happening. You can yeah, you would probably you go to that, that invite that you want to see, get the call ID from there, and then get only the messages related to that yeah. invite. Or if you were going to escalate it in within your, your office or something, you know, probably say, just give us what that call ID was, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but I'll show you a, a better way to, to filter instead of the call ID because this 
release has a nice feature that I'm, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. Very good. Okay, so I was gonna apply, I wanted to apply a filter, but I also wanted to show you that towards the end, I mean, the last filters are generic filters. So if I wanna get rid of register messages, because let's suppose I don't wanna see them, that would be minus NR. If I wanna get rid of subscribe messages, which is what I don't wanna see right now, that would be minus NS. If I don't wanna see options, messages which, which could be annoying <laughs> when we have a lot of zip entities minus n o we can stack these right yeah, yeah. so if you wanna things. if you wanna apply multiple filters yeah, yeah, yeah. you could go like something like this minus n r let's say if i don't want to see registrations space minus n s if i don't want to see subscriptions space minus n o so you just stack them by separating with space so now Notice that it's cleaner. Mm -hmm. Kind of probably hard to see because the color was blue. Maybe yeah. if I highlight everything, there you go. A little bit better. <laughs> and this is exactly the same thing that we saw in the slide. You know, the invites going, then the provisional answers, 100 trying, 180 ringing. Remember, 200 OK when you answer. Let's see, let's actually place, I'm gonna clear this and I'm gonna place another color just because I want the color to be a different color. Let's see if I have love. <coughs> yeah, better, this is a little bit better in red. So you answer blah, 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 bye. Two hundred okay, yeah, I don't get to see, why didn't get to see the body? Did it filter on? No. Oh, I didn't hang up right. Okay. Use error. I'm testing you. You're testing me. You're testing the tools. Okay, so well, a little bit better. Red's a little bit better. But let me show you some stuff that we learned yesterday. Yesterday, I talked about... Remember that I talked about SDP, Session Description Protocol, and I said that that's the protocol that actually allows SIP to deal with telephony because SIP was not intended, was not developed for telephony. Right. So let's take a look at the invite here. I mean, this invite, the very first one, is gonna be denied. That's why you get to see this proxy authentication required. So that invite and this one over here is pretty much the same invite. The only difference is that the second invite we have an authorization key that allows the invite to go through session manager. So I'm gonna open that up and you see headers and this time you see a body let's see let's analyze the headers one by one first the invite and then what's the name of this this is what's known as the request URI and it always has information about the destination who am I trying to invite to this session so I was trying to invite 1204 at converge1.com Okay, remember that the domain counts, the domain matters. Who's the caller? Well, 1203 at converse1.com. Two header, in this case is same as the request URI. Call ID, notice that it's not a caller ID, it's just this random number identifying the, the call, the entire call. Command sequence. This is a number that identifies the transaction. If I open any of the responses associated to this invite, like for example, if I open up this 200K, it should have the same command sequence, because that's one transaction. And the same call ID. And the same, all of these messages should have the same call ID. <coughs> now, if I open up maybe this last 200K, it should have another command sequence because that 200 okay doesn't belong to the invite actually it belongs to the buy so that's how you identify transactions and, and before you go any further backing up just a little once you have a filter how do you clear a filter you press f again okay. and you just hit n okay. and this is a little bit tricky sometimes because if you want to reapply your filters you would have to type them again so in this case i would have to type all of these again and apply them otherwise I'll get everything back yeah yeah so we've got a I mean obviously no act, no other activity 
Mm -hmm. In a normal environment, a uh, production environment, this thing would be flying. Yeah. So there's all kinds of other data. As you change filters, how much his history, how far a rollback? Do you, can you roll back within the Trace SM since you started it? Yeah. And there is a, there is a log that's been, that, that, oh, where everything is being captured while you have Trace SM open. So as long as this is open, I could. I could gather for a half an hour and get all kinds of great data and then just filter back for that one call ID. You could do out it like that. that whole half hour. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. You could do it like that, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Sorry. No, 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 no. Th those are all good questions. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, so I wanted to show you the invite, right? This invite with all of those headers. Uh, huh, via header. Why is that we said the via header is useful? Where it's been. Where it's, where it's where been. It's come from, yeah. So notice that it only has one header right now. Right. And it says, I mean, it has this IP address. That's probably the IP address of my machine mm -hmm. because it's only been here. Right. I mean, the, the invite that I'm analyzing, it's coming from 1203, right? To session manager. Right. If I were to analyze this invite, it should have more than one via header because. It now it's been in session, session manager, manager yeah. right? Can, I don't know if I missed this, but three columns there. Uh huh. And then you have, well, it starts at the top now, you have the from extension number and then the session manager in the middle, and then I guess the two extension numbers. Mm -hmm. Do those correspond to those three columns in any way? Yeah, th this is just to tell you from where to where the, from where to where the message went. So it went from, 1203 to session manager, then from session manager to 1204. So it is always shows you, like for example, go ahead and please place a call right now to actually, hold on, hold on, place, place the call from another extension. Oh, okay. like, where am, I, where am I dialing? Yeah, dial 12, oh, whatever you want to dial. Actually. Even a, a fake one, it give us something. So notice that now that other column showed up. Even though it was not involved in the previous call, or, or it could be, I mean, in this case, it was not part of the previous trace, but now you get to see there. So the more objects you have, you know, placing calls, or the more elements, or phones, or entities you have in uh, doing stuff, all of those are gonna be represented on top. What? So if you were in a production environment, this gets ugly. Yeah, it's gonna get a bunch of stuff over there. That's why you wanna filter either by using the URI or I like the way you're saying, like just open it, let it run, and then go to that log that is saved with everything and filter there in case you don't wanna. Okay, so what are the three columns for? In this, just for you to identify, I mean the columns are just for you to identify that for example, this invite went from this extension number, this phone, which I, by the way, could change with letter I, by pressing I, I could change that to be an IP address. You see? So it's just to, for you to identify that the invite. Instead of columns, think of it more of the, the dotted lines that go down or the representation of those Like endpoints, maybe. So the, the lines line. are the, the yeah. items. Yeah. That if he had another column, there should be another column. It's I'm, line not, I'm still not understanding. Yeah, but I, I like what you're saying. He said, you don't see it as columns. Okay. Because right now, I mean, if you think about it, you see, yeah, three columns, right? Uh -huh. But three columns, but you actually have four entries there. Just don't think of it as columns. Just think of it as the message went from here to here, or from here to here, from here to here. But don't see it as, as a column. Just see it as a, as a, the, the place where the message uh, started and the place where the message finished, you know? The place where the message was sent. So that invite. So, so I guess there's some blue down here. Yeah, and they go. now that I've stood, got here. Right. Yeah. Because the new station so, was not So for example, before. that blue, I want to highlight it so you see it better. The column simply allow you to tell that the invite came from this IP address and went to this one over here. Can just because... Can you rearrange the elements? I mean, it's nice here, SM's in the middle somewhere, but I guess it could get moved around. 
like this, like it was back and forth. The hit I for us so that I got numbers instead of IPs. Thanks. So uh, if you wanted to reverse 1204 and 1201 out there for visual purposes, no. you can't rearrange no. them, can you? No, you can't. You could get rid of 1201, in this case, by applying a filter saying I only want to see uh, the call related to URI 1203, let's say. You know, so you could. <coughs> All right, well, let's back up a second then. Mm -hmm. First of all, what do the different colors represent? That's just a, a Tracy Seven thing for you to easily identify different calls. So it's giving colors based on the call ID, pretty much. It, it's a random selection of a color per yeah. call instance. Yeah. yeah. So that helps a lot if you're, you know, if you're, if you're trying to track one. You try to drill into something. Yeah, drill yeah. into something. But then I know you said no column columns, but I don't know what else to call them. Well, I think <laughs> it was columns. Um, I'm still not tracking. Interaction between the you, two you want to know devices. where that invite's going. So 1203 is asking who? It's asking SM100 for an invite. Yeah. So because the line and there's an arrow, so it's dash dash invite dash dash arrow to SM100. Right. So if there was a message that went direct from 1203 to 1204, it would actually go all the way across right. to there. So that, that's just a dialogue between 1203 and SM100 at that moment. Yeah. An invite that comes from 1203 and go to the right. session manager, well, the SM100, right. and then okay. the next one. I, I know it was confusing me. I have one up here in front of me, and I didn't have any activity. It already scrolled past, and I was only seeing things in the left column. I wasn't oh. seeing them. Uh, yeah. And okay. I can't see that. I have to know what's going on. Right. It's, it is hard to visualize yeah, there. Right. That makes more sense. Okay. So take a look at this. I was looking, I was uh, showing you the invite. Right, and now you see that there is one via header in that first invite. Max forward set to 70. That's a header that's good for uh, preventing loops. So every time the message goes to another, uh, it, you know, like it goes, to, it moves from hop to hop. That number is decreased by one. But I wanted to show you here. Oh, there is another option. What's the name of this body? I mean, what voice. kind of? SDP. SDP, Session Description Protocol. So right now, uh, remember that yesterday I gave you yeah. the, the fields that I think are the most important. Mm -hmm. So O for owner, that would give you the IP address of the interface that's signaling. In this case, the phone is not related to CM, so it just has the IP address of the phone itself. That's the, the, the phone is the one signaling right now. If this was coming from CM, it would be either the IP address of a CLAN or the IP address of a processor Ethernet. Now, I also told you that C, by the way, stands for connection, and I said that the IP address, there is the IP address of the element providing the DSP channel. In this case, the phone itself is the one providing the DSP channel. So that's why you get to see, again, just the IP address of my phone. Now, M stands for audio, and this is where the SDP offer is gonna happen. So notice that the phone is offering these options, option 103, 9, 18, 8, 0, and 110, as codex, and you don't have to remember the mapping because right now it tells you, hey, 103 is Isaac. By the way, Isaac is a codec that Google bot, it was not developed by Google, but it's a very good codec, usually used by soft phones. So if you were to place a call between your two hard phones, you wouldn't see that codec. It just came from, because I have a soft phone right now. Your phone is not gonna be able to use that one, so probably he's gonna use the second one on the list. The second one. This is a, I mean, this is a lot of information, and I appreciate you going through it, but how, is it just through on the job that we're going to get a feel for what we what is important? I mean, obviously all of this is part of the call, but um, is it, is it other than just being on the job, knowing all right, I need when this happens, I need to look for that? Yeah, and when there's a failure, you'll you'll be seeing that the invite went out, but nothing came back, and one of the lines that'll appear will be 
in, in production environments an SPC. So you'll see that the session, you know, the set passed through SM100, SM100 passed it on to SPC. The invite went out, but I'm not seeing an okay coming back from the one of those lines okay. from the SPC line. So what's the deal? Why am my SPC chatting back with me? And then all of a sudden we've isolated yeah. it as the normally, simplest environment. Normally when there is a problem, you get to see an error in the trace. But and I think that those are the problems that are easier to troubleshoot, sure. right? Because yeah, sure. you see an error. I'm trying to give you information of a call that actually was successful and trying to give you information about the headers. Because sometimes the harder, the harder problems to troubleshoot are actually the ones that don't give you an error. Like, the like for example, say, you get to see and the call is mute. The call has no sound. Oh, right. But you see the trace That's, perfect. Or, or, to, or somebody complains and says, my call was kind of choppy. Which means it didn't fail, but now maybe you can tell what kind of codec it settled on. Exactly. And then you can tell that maybe. So, like for example, your call has no sound. So maybe right. if you go, if the call is coming from CN, and now you go to the C field here, you know the Metro that was providing the DSP channel, or you know the media gateway or media server providing the DSP channel. So that could be but useful. <clears throat> But you're going through this here, is again, again, I appreciate that. It. It's not going to mean nothing to me a week. We're just going to give you these actual, these kind of details. Is that, are these codes in this? No, I'm trying to give you stuff that I've been learning by, by, within, yeah, in the years. You know, most of the stuff, I mean, the stuff that you're going to find in the book is how to run trace the same, how to start the trace, how to stop the trace, how to. Yeah, well, where's the reference for, for the trace? Is there a document that has reference? Mm -hmm. The no, no, because this is all SIP. This is the stuff that I learned about SIP over the years. So I'm just trying to give you some some information here that yeah, it's, it's not gonna be so in, it's in, not the book. in this book. We no. should, I mean, it, I guess we should be writing it down or something. I mean, yeah, no, but the thing is that this is an administration class where you learned how to administer session manner and how to administer system manner, uh, right? Saying. It would be, I mean, that kind of stuff would be more like a troubleshooting class where you get to see okay. all of the, all of this stuff. All right, I hear you. Okay, take a look at this. So, M, that stands for media, right away tells me that this was an audio call. This was a video call, I would see uh, M equals audio and M equals video with some other codex being offered. And then notice that the first codec that was offered was Isaac, then G722. Have you heard of that codec, G722? It's a, uh, I don't know who, who developed it, but G722 is a very nice codec because it has a good compression rate, but still good quality, because that's always the compromise, you know, like when you compress a lot, you lose out the quality. But this one, I think this one samples, uh, twice compared with the other codecs like G711 or G729. So it, sample, it takes a lot of samples. Yeah. And it has... Foreign and mirroring. This is the offer right now. And it, who's mirror. offering? You can tell right away that the one offering is my phone, 1203, okay. right? So I'm offering all of those codecs. Yeah. Let me see. Is this something that's offering all at one time or is it offering get rejected? Only rejected? this time, uh, at, only at this point. I mean, is it offering all these at one Yeah, instance? at one time. Yeah, yeah. One instance, I, the M1, the 103, the 9, the 18, the 8, that's a series of codecs that it's offering. So in one M, it's saying, this is my prioritized list of co potential codecs. It's not necessarily getting rejected after each one. No. No, it says, here. here's my whole buffet. Okay. Pick something. Pick something, but it's giving you an order to, it's giving an order like, this so is really my. not that important. Huh? I don't really care what I offer. I'm looking for what I got. Yeah, and what I'm yeah. going to show you that too. Okay. So I also want to point out that this one here, this is not a codec, 120. It's a telephone event. And if you read about that event, that's the event that deals with DTMF in SIP. Mm -hmm. So the phone right now is saying, hey, I'm offering event 120 to deal with DTMF. Right. And it's the only option it's offering for DTMF. So if the destination says, I don't know how to deal with event 120, there's not gonna be a way to inter interchange DTMF information. Right. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Let's see. So I got to find the SDP offer in the invite. Where would I look? Where should I look to see the SDP response? We saw that yesterday, remember? We saw that, let me go back to the slides. We saw that there's something known as, well, I'll remove it, but as early offer, remember? If the, if the SDP offer happens in the invite, the response to that offer should be in the 200K. And that's known as early offer, remember? Mm -hmm. So I should look in the 200K. In the 200K, I'm gonna find a response to that offer. So if I, oops, if I scroll down, I'll see that the destination say, hey, out of all of those options that you that the caller offer, let's use G722, uh -huh. you see, yeah. which is nine, and it was okay by using 120, even 120 for DTMF. So that's what the answer is, there. That, that's the answer. That call happened in G722, which was the second option, again, because that phone is not capable of dealing with ISAT. Right. And it also said, I'm okay using DTMF, DTMF by uh, using event 120. And that, is that in the priority of what it likes? Or is that just saying, I, these are the two that I'll, I'm willing to, to deal with? So the, it was the highest priority first that the endpoints could yeah. support. So, G, so, it, so it goes by the best quality first, I guess, G722 or? In this case, that, that list of codecs were somehow hard-coded in my subphone, okay. in my 1X communicator. Okay. And yeah, it's gonna pick actually, I mean the idea later when you have seen in the picture is that you have a list of codecs right in, the, in your IP codec set and you start putting yeah. the ones on top, the ones that the you ones prefer that you to, to use. Yeah. Okay. That's and notice that I here, understand. it picked the second one. The first right. one was Isaac and, and it, it picked the second one, yeah. right? Okay. That codec, by the way, the G722, only the 96 family is able to deal with that. Right. The 16 family, 1601, 16 whatever, or 46 family 46 cannot deal with that codec. Uh, you, you said it, show us one, show, where did it choose it? Ah, okay, so that's the, I was going back to the invite, which is the SDP offer. Okay. If I go to the 200K, I will see the SDP response. Mm -hmm. So okay. notice that here it said, Call the G722 and telephone event 120. Right. Now, there's an easier way here in, in, in TraceSM to tell what codec was you if you press R. If you press R for RTP, you're gonna see here, it's kind of tiny, but that the codec used was G722. Can you see there? Yep. Actually, actually, I was analyzing the first call, sorry about it. So it's here, G722, mm -hmm. you see? So yeah. if I press R, R again, it toggles that on and off. Yeah, you notice that this time it's actually going across the, it's going across from one yeah. point to the other. Telling you I that the communication, it. right, right. happened directly between, between the two endpoints. Uh, Nestor, this is only for SIP phones, SIP traffic, not... This is for everything that goes through session management. Okay. If a call is, in, is initiated in CM by a digital phone, mm -hmm. but if, that, if CM sends that to session manager, because maybe you wanna send it to the SBC to go out, to go out you'll see the same exact thing, because mm -hmm. even though it's coming from a digital phone, CM is gonna convert that to SIP before it sends it to session manager, because all session manager understands is it. So I would see it from my digital phone going you, to my voicemail? You, yeah, you, you will yeah, see it from your digital phone. It's SIP integrated voicemail, yeah. yes. So how do you yeah. go up to see the past? Keep oh, right the now, door. if I clear the screen, <coughs> I can't see anything, but everything that I am doing right now is being saved to a log file. So let me show you that log file. If I press stop to stop the phrase, Actually, uh, let me see. I wanted to show you something else before that, but let's, let's do it. So I'm gonna press Q, and it's gonna tell me where the logs file, log files are. If I trace only zip messages, the log files are here. 
var log avaya trace and the name of the log is tracer underscore asset dot log so I'm gonna go to that directory, var log a value trace. How did you get that help menu? Hold up, I'm sorry. As soon as you quit. <laughs> as soon as you uh, quit, you get to see that parts. information. Okay. Yeah. Which is handy because I always forget about those paths. So let's see, a via trace. If I go to that directory and let's list the file, I see I see here the log file that they were talking about, tracer underscore asset dot log. Every time this log reaches 10,000 lines, there is a new log file created. Right. So I can tell right away that it hasn't reached 10,000 lines because that's the only log file with the tracer underscore asset dot log. If it had reached 10,000 lines already, I would see it with a dot one number appended at the end, you know, so at the when it reaches 10,000 lines, session marks appends a number to the end for you to know that it's an old log file. And then if it doesn't have a number appended to the end of the name, you know it's a current uh, log file. Now, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use TraceSM. I mean, if I go and do a more or on the log file, right? More in that log file, it's gonna show me every message open and it's gonna be messy, it's gonna be hard to read. So instead, I'm gonna quit, show you again the, let me just clear the screen, show you again the files. So instead, I'm gonna use TraceSM again, but this time to open up the log file. So tracer underscore asset dot log. This time is not a real time trace, I'm gonna use TraceSM to open up that file. And notice that it's probably gonna take some time because it has a lot of information. It's pretty much showing me all of the stuff that has been captured while someone had traces them open. Not only this time, but maybe last week some, someone opened traces them and it's gonna show me that information too. Oh, awesome. So wait though, like when I, go, when I exit traces them, mm -hmm. It says it's still going to be running. How do you not have trace SM running? Quit. Quit. You stop it with S and then press Q to or stop. quit. Yeah, stop. Yeah. yeah, that's a good habit. Stop it first and then. Yeah, so if you just hit Q, it says it's still, still running. Yeah, if you had stopped, stop it. Let me see. That's because you have a run. Say no. The first place customer cuts one, two, three, four. But our case is to first stop it by pressing S. Now I know it's stopped. And then press Q. Go to the same place and you get to see that they've run. I mentioned the same. Those are still running in every session. We are really tight about trying not to because it. Yeah. It uh. Well, well, yeah, I it, it overworks the servers. <laughs> Could leave the process bad. running, yeah. Files that are building. Yeah. So guys, take a look at this. I want to show you an option. So this is if, this is not a real-time trace, but I still have all of the options, right? I could filter. I could apply filters. I could do everything I want, just as if I were, were running the uh, real trace system. This is the option I want to show you. It's kind of, it's very nice. D equals calls. It's gonna give it's gonna give me a diagram view of every call going through this session manner. Well, in this case, every call that went through this session manner, because I'm reading from a log. So if I press D, well, only three calls were in that log file, and it tells me from where to where. You see, it went from extension 1203 to 1204. It tells me the state, so that one, that call was terminated. And what I like about this is that once you locate your call, the one that you wanna check, you yeah, just go there, press enter, and it only gives you those messages associated to the call. That's cool. That's, that's D, yeah, yeah, pressing D. That's cool because uh, you could easily locate the call you're interested in to see without, without applying filters, yeah. or like a call ID filter, in it, you know? It's like a CDR in a way. Yeah, go to the one you want to see, press enter, and then you get to see only the messages associated to that call. The reason why this happens, if you press filters, just out of curiosity, you're going to see that TraceSM actually applied a, a filter. 
based on the SIP AV Global Session ID. It's another header that also allows you to identify the, the session. Similar to a call ID? Similar to call ID, but in this case it's a session ID. Yeah. You see? So that's the diagram view. I'm gonna this, is, this is awesome. Yeah, I'm going to quit the trace, run another trace. Trace the same, start the trace. Uh, let's see what else can I show you. I'm going to enable this time call processing. Take a look at this. Not only SIP, but call processing. And session mask is going to tell me, or trace is going to tell me, hey, be careful. Because enabling call processing may have a negative performance impact on session manager, <laughs> potentially causing an outage. Ooh, wow. And the reason why it's giving me this message is because I'm gonna get to see more messages now because I'm gonna see the SIP messages plus the internal decisions that session manager is making in order to route that call or to do whatever it is. Is doing. That's something you want to do off hours, I guess. Yeah, that's something you want to do off hours, but it's useful if you want to see why is that session manager maybe routed that call somewhere, or why is that session manager applied that adaptation, you know? So I'm going to enable it right now. I'm going to say yes, enable it. Now you see on the bottom that both SIP and call processing, it's happening. So if I place my call one more time, Notice that now you have all of those messages highlighted in yellow and green, and those are call processing messages. I'm gonna hand up. So, so if this is useful, it tells you, okay, a session might found a location for the call. Then it tried to find a dial pattern, and it's not gonna find a dial pattern, because there's no dial pattern, actually. This happened via raised routing. So it tried to find a regular expression and then didn't find anything like that, and it just find a route, which is pr probably just the IP address of the other phone. But, I mean, right now it's not giving me a lot of information, but later when we had routing configured between labs, or I mean, in real life, when you do have your session manager doing some routing, and adaptations, and a lot of stuff, this is useful for you to see, oh, okay, this is why my session manager is sending this request over there. Because maybe it's matching with the, uh, ROM dial pattern, or maybe it's matching with a ROM originating location, something like that. You see, so it could be useful for that purpose. However, be careful because in a real environment, you have a lot of calls going through and you're gonna get all of these extra messages for each call. So you wanna be careful with that. Is that kept on that same block? Everything right now is kept, right in yeah, everything. Everything is kept on that file. Now, you could get rid of those by filter, filtering those out by saying, hey, I don't want to see call processing messages. You're filtering them out from the screen, but they're still going to be on the log file, and they're going to still be, be captured. So I could say minus NA and get rid of those messages. And again, if I want to get rid of those subscribes, that would be minus NA and minus NS. And now I got just that call. Now, let me show you another option. So let's see. So far we've seen most of the options. Stop to, to st S to stop, Q to quit, enter to see details of a message, F for filters, W to write. I haven't shown you that one. So let's suppose that I don't want to send you all, let's suppose you're trying to help me with a problem, but I don't want to send you that huge log file with up to 10,000 lines. So what I could do at this point, let's suppose that I capture what I needed right now, and it's showing the problem. Let's suppose that, and I just wanna show you this, eh, send you this. So I would press W to write the displayed filter C packets to a file. So it's gonna write to a file whatever's after applying filters. So pretty much write what you see on the screen. File name, I'm gonna call this Nestor Norcross. And it's gonna leave this file in the same directory where you open that TraceSM. Because you could invoke TraceSM from any directory. So let's see, I'm gonna save this, okay, it's saved. 
I'm gonna stop the trace, quit the trace, and now if I do ls, you're gonna see that it left the file here. You could now go with WinCP, grab that file, take it to your computer, and compress the file because it's a compressed file, and you will get to see only that log file that you could send to someone, you know, in case you need help or you want to. Let me uncompress the file here so that I don't have to WinSCP the file to my computer. Let's just uncompress the file here. Um, what's the way to uncompress files here? Uh, something dash x the uh, what is uh, Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I've got it on a cheat sheet, but I don't know. That's going to be, yeah, it's XVN, exactly. Those are the yeah. flags that you normally use. And, man, how can I forget about this? Uh, tar? Tar. <laughs> tar minus XVF. Yeah. And then the name of the file and it's going to show you that after uncompressing the two files. there are two files notice that there is one pickup file That's a that you could open in Wireshark, Wireshark in yeah. case I'm trying to send ah. this trace to someone who has Wireshark the other one is a text file if I go and open that one with more for example if I want to read that text file it show me the message is open but if I have trace SM let's do an LS again if I have trace SM I could do trace SM I could use trace SM to open that file just as I open the other log file and now you'll get to see only so those messages two questions then how do we how do you refer to opening up a so if I said, hey, I got trace AM, trace SM, <laughs> uh -huh. I guess I'd say that I'm running a trace AM, meaning that it's live, it's dynamic, versus I open the trace SM log file. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's live or historical? Yeah, live or historical, I guess. And is there an emulator for Windows for trace SM so I can open it up? Because you said we'd send the file. Would I see this in the file? Yeah, Wireshark will do lavish. Yeah. Like this. Okay. So they look almost identical. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's not like a text file that's going to look like this if I send it to somebody, right? No. Okay. Usually, no. what I've seen people doing, by the way, now that you asked that question, let's suppose that I'm sending you, I want to send you this, but you don't have Trace SM and you don't have Wireshark. Right. So, what I've seen people doing now that you asked is what they just select everything here. Yeah. And then right click here <coughs> and say copy all to clipboard. Yeah. Right? And then they just paste it to a notepad and it shows like it shows this. That's pretty nice, but That's you, don't get, you can't drill <laughs> yeah. into anything. Yeah. Well, right. nice but this is at least useful for someone to see the ladder, right. you know, the call flow, and it's so like, oh, okay. In Wireshark, in Wireshark, do all the hyperlinks or whatever you want to call it, do those work? Yep. Yeah, in charge, in Watcher, you're gonna see this, and you're gonna be able to go to each message exactly. and also get to see headers exactly. and all that like stuff. Okay. <coughs> Notice that here I'm pressing D to get to that diagram view. Let's play some calls, bunch of calls. Like for example, this one here. Yeah, go ahead and play some calls. What I like about this is that it also tells you. Oh, what's going on? No, hold on, I'm reading from the log file. Actually, no, this is not a live one. Not a live one. Trace yeah. the same. So now let's play some calls. But I want to see the diagram view. You see, it tells you that the call was kind of hard to tell, but it was canceled. Course, it tells you the state of that call. Let's place one that is actually answered. Go ahead and answer it, one of those. You see, it tells you the state. Now it's confirmed, 200 okay. We haven't hung up. When you hang up, go ahead. It's gonna show you terminated. You see, so it uh, updates the current state of 
the call based on the zip message, the, the, late, the latest zip message that was received. Mm -hmm. So in a production environment, you probably want to see 50 calls, 100 calls going through. And you, it's easy for you to go and check the from header, the to header, and it's like, okay, this is the call I need to see, yeah. even without applying a single filter. And then you go to the call, hit enter, and you only get to see those messages mm -hmm. related to that call. You know? It'll be better in red. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I really like that. The D option, diagram view, it, it was new with 6.3. We didn't have that option before. Uh, back in the olden days. Yeah, I saw uh, a peer I've worked with a good bit doing that, and I hadn't caught on to how he was pulling it off to center on the single call so quickly. He'd uh, grab my, he we screen share a lot, right. uh -huh. and all of a sudden he's like, got it nice and neat. And I'm like, damn, I'm trying to, you know, because I was very confused and bewildered by the all the calls. There's another option that I didn't point out. A equals show SM. So remember that you have the session one application and uh, SM100. So right now, if I, if I were to press A, it would show me also the message going from the SM100 to the SM application. Sometimes you don't want to see that message because it's pretty much the same message. So it toggles on and off, eh? Yeah, if I toggle on and off, yeah, you see? Oh, right, because it says hide SM when you have it on. Yeah, okay. so it's just the message from the SM100 to the session one application. In case you want to see something that didn't happen externally, but just be between session application and the SM100. Back in the day, there were two tools, Trace SM and Trace SM100. <laughs> yeah. And now they are all in combined. the same tool, combined in the same tool. Cool. What else? Let's see. I think that's it. And the rest of this is getting familiar with headers, yeah. right? And Usually what I do if I'm not sure if this happened, how it happened, you know, the SDP offer. Was it an early offer or a delayed offer? Now I know it's a delayed, uh, uh, early offer because the SDP body, it's in the invite. If, if I right away see that there's no SDP body in the invite, I know it's a delayed offer. It's coming from the other end. And I know that I should look for the offer in the 200 okay, and for the answer to that offer in the acknowledge. Okay, so that's trace the same. Let's go back.